this is Burme Mountain, where of late summer, early autumn is always unpredictable. Although located in the Sichuan Basin, it has an altitude of 3,000 meters. For millennia, the warm and wet climate has provided a good environment for fauna and flora. There are more than 6,000 species of animals and plants living on the mountain, many unknown to the outside world. The second phase in the life of a wax insect, or Aracaraspella, we'll call Jack, begins on a sunny morning in late September. Jack is only three millimeters long, smaller than an ant. Jacoby is unusual under the microscope. He is gold colored with transparent wings and hairy legs. His only task in life is to reproduce. He must find a mate in his short life, even foregoing eating and drinking to do so. A disaster is imminent. Early in the morning, wax insect breeders start working in the mountains. The men chop on the trees holding the wax insects, while the women and elderly pick the wax flowers. The wax of the wax insect is pure, organic, and of high quality, making it ideal for use in medicines and cosmetics. Must leave his home or die here. Jack is finally able to relax after fleeing the danger of the wax flower. Looking into the dense forest, Jack wonders what lies ahead.
small bugs beside the wax flower catch Jack's attention. They look as though they are playing among the tree branches. The white bug has a white tail, the colour of the wax flower, and it has an umbrella-like cover that protects its body. Jack wants to meet his neighbours, but they pay no attention to him. A little bug frightens a black moth. And the little bug loses its precious tail. White bugs rely on the protection of the white wax flowers, but now they must leave. Jack had no time to worry about the little white bugs needed to find a mate before the end of his short life. But he was not so lucky in finding potential mates. When he climbed on a leaf, Jack suddenly spotted a potential mate. These small shells on the trees are actually female wax insects, although they look nothing like insects. They sit motionless on tree branches, waiting to mate with male wax insects. The male wax insects born on this tree are much luckier than Jack. Although Jack has wings, he can't fly. He can only move around on six legs. But Jack is undeterred and continues on his way. Jack sees several female wax insects, but they don't look well developed. If a female's shell is too hard, Jack cannot mate with her. It is Jack's duty to mate with several females. He sets his sights on two females that look pretty good. The male wax insect must use its front legs to hold down the female so that his tail spine can penetrate the shell of the female. On his first time, Jack unexpectedly fails. He's frustrated, but not ready to throw in the towel. A new challenge comes from the sky.
clouds fill the sky. A heavy rain is coming. Can weak little Jack escape the downfall? The heavy rain lasts all morning, only clearing up around noon. Jack is nearly frozen as he crawls on the white wax, desperately hoping for a break in the clouds. As the temperature rises again, the animals become active as well. The little white bug grows a new tail. The wax left behind on the tree provides food for many forest insects. Wax is a favoured food of this parasitic wasp, who is delighted to find it. When Jack's wings have dried in the sun, he again goes searching for a mate. He needs to find two healthy females for his mission. Jack has made several tries over the past three days, but is still unsuccessful. He's been five days without food, and he's tired. But this is the lot of an adult male wax insect whose whole purpose in life is to find a mate before dying. Seven unsuccessful days, it appears Jack may die without mating. Jack's neighbors, the little white bugs, feel sorry for him. On the ninth day, Jack has one last chance to mate with a female. It takes all his strength, but he is at last successful.
Jack dies soon after mating and eventually falls from a tree. under the wax tree form a soft warm cushion for the dead. soon engulfs Urmay Mountain, and the forest insects gradually disappear. Jack is gone, but thousands of his offspring are growing in the fertilized body of a female wax insect. Jack's many descendants will burst out to begin their own story in the spring. China is still fairly cold. On Urmei Mountain, spring arrives. The sunlight penetrating the trees lights up the azaleas blooming all over the mountain. A couple of nectar-loving hummingbirds are attracted to the flowers. The female wax insects on the tree have grown over the past six months. Female wax insects have a round body with no obvious head or legs. They look more like fruit growing out of the tree than insects. Although she lost her husband on their wedding day, Jack's wife, Jill, never feels lonely. She has her sisters, who are also waiting to give birth. and her sisters begin the birth process. A squirrel is attracted by the sweet secretion of the wax insects. The curious juvenile squirrel licks the fluid oozing from the red fruit. 
It looks as though the squirrel finds it delicious. The arrival of a squirrel makes Jill and her sisters a little nervous. The tiny female wax insects mean nothing to the squirrel. It could flip its paw and send them flying or easily smash them with its teeth. Then, the screech of a bird called a bulbul catches the squirrel's attention. The squirrel has invaded his territory. The young squirrel soon realizes that the bird is not a real threat. Again, the squirrel turns his interest to Jill and her sisters. But he seems to know that this fruit is not edible. Birds in the forest also like the sweet secretion of Jill and her sisters. Seeing that the animals are not a threat, she sleeps in peace. In the dark night of the forest, there's hardly a sound, but there is nearly always danger lurking in the dark. Jill is awakened when her tree branch begins shaking. These two animals are big but graceful, but Jill is still worried about getting hurt. The slow loris is a slow mover and a fairly primitive monkey species. Slow loris are usually active at night, mainly eating fruit supplemented by insects when they can catch them. The fruit on the wax tree attracts the attention of a male slow loris who discovers the sweet smell seems a little strange. But instead of immediately leaving, he picks up one of Jill's sisters to play with in his hands. The slow loris naturally has no idea that removing a pregnant wax insect from the tree this way could prove fatal to the insect. After closely looking at the insect, he decides it is not edible and throws it away. He climbs further up the tree, searching for food for his family. The female just sits back and nonchalantly watches her mate. Seeing that her mate hasn't found anything, the disappointed female settles down for a nap. Her mate then decides to join her. Okay, 
Let's take a nap. Cauliflower snake silently approaches the pair. Although the snake is not poisonous, the slow loris are frightened. The male monkey purposely attracts the attention of the snake and bravely stands up to it. female intently watches the confrontation and worries about her mate. Witnessing these two square off, Jill feels extremely insignificant. In nature, there is no absolute winner. The snake suddenly turns his attention to something else and crawls away along the tree stem. It takes the slow loris a long time to recover from the near miss. But eventually, they fall into a peaceful sleep. Miraculous changes have taken place in Jill's body in the past few days. Changes that show that Jill is truly an insect. Jill begins producing eggs, a process that begins inside her body. Jill's body is the size of a peanut but she can produce thousands of eggs. As she produces her last egg, Jill dies. But the shell of her body still protects her eggs, which could easily become food for the other animals of the forest. 
A female weevil approaches Jill, apparently looking for weak spots in her shell so she can get at the wax insect eggs. Jill's hard shell protects her children from the weevil, but the weevil is still her enemy. quickly finds a mate. They chase each other around for a short while before finally mating. After mating, the weevil goes back to Jill. The shell is not strong enough to resist the weevil's powerful spine. So the weevil easily lays an egg in Jill's body. The weevil then contentedly leaves with no further thought of her offspring. Weevils are not the only threat to wax insects. There are many other insects that like to lay their eggs inside wax insects, and for good reason. The weevil's egg in Jill's body could be bad news for Jack and Jill's offspring. The weevil egg, which hatches before the offspring of Jack and Jill, eagerly consumes the eggs of the wax insect. The young weevil Brutus, like a spoiled rich kid, is never without food and he soon grows white and plump. Jack and Jill would never know that the offspring they sacrificed to create were now food for a weevil larva. About 10 days after birth, Brutus spins a silky case for itself to become a pupa. Life inside the dead wax insect has grown calm now that the weevil has become a pupa and many of the wax insect eggs have survived. The round eggs of the wax insect are gradually becoming larvae. Before they actually become wax insects, the larvae must undergo a difficult metamorphosis.
Breaking through the transparent shell is not easy. The first order of business for Johnny, the firstborn son, is to exercise his new appendages. It's time for a walk while his brothers and sisters are still sleeping. Johnny is only one millimeter long, so the inside of his mother's body seems huge. Johnny looks for a friend, but finds no one. After several days, more male and female wax insects are born. The females look completely different from their mother. Instead of being round, they have six slim legs and a pair of bright eyes. As more and more wax insects come to life, the space inside Jill's body can no longer accommodate them. Brutus, who now looks exactly like his parents, bites a hole in the shell of the dead wax insect. Several wax insect larvae bravely try to escape, but they're quickly gobbled up by Brutus, who can't resist such an easy snack. Their lives mean nothing to him. The hole grows bigger as Brutus begins to emerge, but he will have to continue working to get out completely. The small hole is finally big enough, and Brutus hurriedly exits. After Brutus leaves, Johnny and the others dare to emerge. The new wax insects would never have seen the light of day if Brutus hadn't bitten a hole in the shell. The world of nature is both cruel and marvellous. For the wax insects, the weevil is both a natural enemy as well as a life -saving. The newly born wax insects, including Johnny, quickly go off in all directions. They soon realize they are not alone. Wax insects meet each other on the leaves.
once on the green leaves. They can enjoy the sunshine and delicious sap. Johnny gets his first taste of the sweet life. But not all wax insects are so lucky. Without a parasite to bite open the shell of their mother, the wax insect larvae would never have escaped her hard shell. But wax insect breeders can also help them escape. When they remove a shell from the tree, it naturally leaves a hole where it was connected to the tree. Like silkworm farmers growing silkworms, Chinese wax breeders have been growing wax insects for more than 1,000 years. Over 1,000 years ago, Zhou Mi, a Chinese agriculturalist, wrote a book that described the breeding of wax insects and wax production. He wrote, For more than 10 years, a Taoist monk has been selling wax insect pupae by the litre. To breed them, about a dozen pupae wrapped in a grass pouch are hung in a tree during the planting season. In May, the young ant-like wax insects hatch, leaving wax secretions on the tree. Wax insect breeders on Erme Mountain now wrap the pupae in wax tree leaves instead of a grass pouch, saving both time and money. They also drill holes in the leaves to allow the wax insect larvae to emerge. After all the pupae have been wrapped in this way, they hang them on the trees. Several days later, the pupae emerge. Tens of millions of wax insects hatch and immediately leave their leaf package to find a growing wax tree leaf. In May, temperatures rise as the summer approaches. As the wax insect larvae feed on the tree's sap, they seem to almost become one with the leaves. 
The males secrete a small amount of wax as they crawl on the leaves. But this is not the form of wax desired by the breeders. After eating and drinking their fill, the wax insect larvae all return to their tree branch as if on a schedule. Some are female and some male. Johnny stays with his brothers while his sisters go elsewhere. Changes are silently taking place in the bodies of Johnny and his brothers. We have sped up the video so the crystal clear strands of wax can be seen emerging from pores all over their bodies. trees are covered with white wax flowers, making it look as though it snowed in summer. Thanks to their hard work, the male wax insect larvae have completed the most important mission of their entire lives. Meanwhile, the heads and legs of the female wax insects gradually become indistinct as they tightly cling to the branches waiting to mate with the adult males. This is the busiest as well as the happiest season for the Ermey Mountain wax insect breeders. They work all day, chopping off branches and collecting wax. The collected wax must then be processed to remove the many impurities. The wax flowers are heated in a big pot where the flowers are soon liquefied without the need to add water. The flowers are boiled for four or five hours. The boiling colors the wax but also purifies it as the impurities slowly settle out to the bottom.
Although Johnny is covered with a thick coat of wax, his life is not over. He is entering the next stage of life in which he will carry out his last mission, reproduction.